All right, all righty. So let's say, for example, you open up a chart of a stock that you want to trade, but when you open up the chart and you look at it, you're not sure if you want to go long or short, right? You have trouble trying to read the chart. You're not sure what to do. So in this case, what kind of trades do you put on? So this is where you want to use what is called market neutral trading strategies. All right. So in this video, I'm going to introduce to you the concept of market neutral trading strategies if you're not sure. And I'm going to be sharing with you the top three most profitable strategies in this area. So the very first question you might be asking, right, especially if you're new to option trading, is what exactly are market neutral trading strategies? So basically, market neutral trading strategies are strategies that seek to profit regardless if the market goes up or down. So instead of having a bullish or bearish bias, what you want to do is that you seek to profit as long as the market stays in a given range. So let's take a look at this chart down here. So let's say if you open up a chart and you see that the price is currently down here, right? So at this point of time, do you think the market is going to go up? Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? So in order for you to have a bullish or bearish view, you do need to have a little bit of what you call you know, chart reading abilities. You need to have these technical skills to read technical analysis, also support and resistance. But what do you do if you know, you're not that good at it, you're not that keen into looking at this uh, chart reading things. So in this case, instead of saying, you know, having a bullish or bearish bias, what you want to do is, hey, I'm not sure if the market is going to go up or down, but I do know that, hey, there is a chance that the market can stay within this range, right, by a certain time. And if the market stays within this certain range, you're going to make money. So as you can see, the profit zone is pretty big. Now, if you were to just choose a traditional way of trading style, you know, let's say, for example, you think it's going to go up, you're going to buy it, right, then chances are it's going to be pretty much a 50, you know, 50-50 kind of a... Uh, probability that you'll make money. Same thing as if you were to, you know, trade the market short, right, without options, it's going to be 50-50. But if you use options using this market neutral trading strategies, right, you definitely have a more than 50% chance of probability of profit that the market is going to stay within this given range. So this definitely takes off the stress, right, the pressure that you have, you know, in picking a direction. Right? So you do not actually have to pick a direction, you just have to say the market is going to stay within a certain range and then you're going to profit. So now the question becomes is how do you exactly know what is that range? Right? How do you know where the market is going to be trading in the next what 30 days or up to 60 days? So the answer lies in what's called the expected move. Right? So this expected move is very important uh, key terminology when you want to trade options. So the expected move is basically the amount that a stock is expected to either go up or down from its current price by a certain time based on its current level of implied volatility. Right? If this sounds confusing, don't worry, I'll explain it with the chart. So now for those mathematicians, those like to see the kind of formula this is basically the formula, right? Stock price times the implied volatility and the square root of the number of days divided by 365, all right? So the good news is that there is no need for you to calculate this yourself, right? Because if you were to open up, all right, the option trading platform, uh, there are two option trading platforms right now that I know of that will show you what is this expected move and that is the TD Ameritrade, right? Think of Swim platform or the Tasty Works platform by Tasty Trade. Right, so basically when you open up your option chain, you will see at the right hand side of the option uh, expiration dates, right, you will see these numbers here. So this is basically the implied volatility and on the right hand side how this translates into the expected move. So if you see all these numbers here, what it's trying to tell you is that this is the expected move that the stock will make in the next number of days based on the expiration date. So if you take a look at this uh, days expiration down here, the 17 March expiration with 45 days left to go, right? you can see that with this implied volatility here, what it's saying that you can see down here it says 21.9. So basically what it's saying that it will either move up 21.9 points or move down 21.9 points. So this is how you can have your expected move range, right? So let's say for example, if the stock price right now is a hundred dollars, right? So what it's trying to say is that there is a chance that it will move up, right, by 21 points. So let's round this off to uh, 22 points. So that will be a hundred and $22 and then 
on the downside, you're minus $22. And if my math is correct, it would equate to $78. So what it's trying to say is that in the next 45 days, there is a high probability, all right, it's more than 50%. So generally in expected move, you have a probability of around 68%. So there's a 68% chance that the market is going to stay within this range in the next 45 days. So that is how you know what the expected range is. So why does trading the expected move work, right? So this is backed up by a lot of statistics. So it has been shown, right, the historical statistics have shown that the implied volatility usually overstates the actual volatility. That means that prices tend to stay within the expected move more often than the probability suggests. So for example, let's say that based on the implied volatility just now, which we saw, it says that there is a, right, based on this, there is a chance that the market will stay within this range, right, uh, by expiration on 45 days. But this is based on the implied volatility, but the actual volatility could actually be much lesser in terms of the move. So that means it could probably maybe be $110 down to um, probably around say $90. So that is what it's trying to say. This is the actual realized move compared to the implied move, the expected move that the probability suggests, right? So if you were to take a look at this statistics, this is done by uh, the Tasty Trade people. So basically, they have done the studies to see the actual occurrences that is within the expected move. So there are two ways for you to calculate the uh, expected move. So what we will do is based on this, which is what you see at your option chain. right? So this number down here on the right-hand side. So what it's trying to say is that based on that number, the probability suggests that there is a 68% chance that you will stay within this range. But when the actual uh, trade actually happens, or rather when the market has actually played out, it shows that the actual occurrences within this range is actually much higher, 85%. So what does this mean? It means that if your winning percentage is based on 68%, let's say you win 68% of the time, you make a certain amount of money. What it's trying to say that is you actually make more money most of the time. You do not win just 68%, you actually win up to 85%. And an even better uh, number down here is to tell you, you see, how often does it actually expire above the upper level of the expected move and below the lower level of the expected move? So as you can see, it actually only expires right roughly 70 to eight, uh, 7 to 8 percent beyond the expected move so i've drawn down here so what he's trying to say that anything that's above this price right is roughly 7 to 8 percent only right similarly below down here it only expires below this price roughly 7 to 8 percent of the time so most of the time the price will stay within here and that is how you're able to make money using the market neutral trading strategies so again they did even more research down here so you can see that they did research uh based on i cannot remember how many years was it but it was it was quite uh, uh significant probably about 10 years or something where they showed the actual realized move compared to the expected move based on the calculation right so the expected move shows that it, it's always much larger than the realized move so this is for spy Right, for SPY, you can see that they even break it down based on the implied volatility uh, rank. So you can see that in all instances, the expected move is much higher than the actual realized move, even when the volatility is very high. So that means this includes when the market crashes. When the market crashes, this expected move actually already takes into consideration the kind of move that it will make, right? Obviously, it will be much more volatile than when the market is, you know, trending upwards and is is in pretty much in a, a bull market, right? But when it comes to a bear market, when there are crashes, the implied volatility will increase, thus expanding the expected range of the stock. So you can see that even during crashes, the realized move is much lesser than the implied volatility suggests. So this is for SPY, and for IWM as well. This is the Russell 2000 Index ETF. You can see again in all instances the expected move overstates the actual realized move so that means the premium which you're selling right which you're getting is based on the expected move that means to say you actually should have gotten 
lesser, but they are giving you more than what you should be actually getting. And that is how you can profit from the market neutral trading strategies. So again, here is for QQQs, you can see it's the same thing. The expected move is bigger than the actual realized move. So now that we know that the expected move is much greater than the realized move, what kind of option trading strategies can we use to take advantage of this fact? So I'm going to be sharing with you the top three most profitable market neutral option trading strategies, starting with number one, which is the iron condor. By the way, if this video has been helpful so far, I appreciate if you hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel so I can create more videos like this for you in the future. All right, back to the video. Right, so the very first market neutral trading strategy is the iron condor, right? So I've created a separate video already on this. I went in depth into how you can construct it and also how do you manage it once you're in the trade. So for this, I'm just gonna give you an overview. If you wanna go the in-depth video, you want to see the in-depth video of the iron condor you can go ahead and click at the top right hand corner of this video go to that link right but for this video i'm just going to give you a brief walkthrough of what the iron condor is basically as you can see the iron condor consists of two uh, short options which is the short put short call and then there is the long put and the long call so this is how the iron condor looks like so one way you can look at it is like there's two credit spreads, right? You have the put credit spread and then you have the call credit spread. So in this case, both sides are giving you an overall credit. So the way you want to construct this is basically you find the expected move, right? So the expected move, the range is where you want to put your short put and your short call, right? So down here, as you can see, there is a short put and then the long put is used to define your risk. That means with this, you know what your maximum loss is, all right? So in case if the market actually crashes all the way to zero, you cannot lose everything because your loss has already been defined when you buy this long put. In the, similarly, in the case of the call side, if the market was to rally and shoot up all the way to the moon, right? You won't lose everything because your long call has already defined your risk. As you can see, this is the most that you can lose. So as you can see on both ends, it has been kept to a maximum uh, loss. At the same time, in the middle, this is where you will make your profit. So as long as the market stays within this range, when the, uh, let's say it reaches the expiration date, then this is where you're going to make the money. All right, so how do you select your strikes? So first of all, basically you just pull up the option chain, you go to the option chain, uh, the days to expiration which you want. Generally, when it comes to credit spreads like the Iron Condor, we want to be looking for something like 45 to 60 days. At least that's what I'm looking for, right? This is the uh, sweet spot of where you're going to get nice uh, decay from theta and also pretty decent premiums as well. So what you want to do is you take a look at this uh, expected move number down here. You can see it's 13. So as you can see, the price right now is around 145. Now, of course, you can see the strikes are in five points. So you cannot get exactly, you know, 145 minus 13, there'll be 132. You can see there's no 132. So what you want to do is you choose the nearest one, which is uh, 130. Then if you want to do a five point wide spread, that means your maximum risk will be kept to $500 minus the credit which you receive, all right? So on the put side, this is how you construct it. And on the call side, this is how you construct it. So you basically just, plus or minus according to this sign down here, right? 13.7, run it off to 15 and you get this iron condor, right? So if I was to show it to you on the charts, this is how it would look like. So you can see the market is here right now. Let's say you do not have any bullish or bearish bias. You just want to play the market neutral strategy. This is how it looks like on a chart. So that means the market can go anywhere it wants to, right? It can even go above the strikes right but as long as it comes down by expiration then you're going to be in profit and as you can see the profit actually extends past your short put because this is where your break even is right so your break even is always past your short put strike it's always in between the short and long put strike somewhere within here right so you want to go to your risk profile to take a look at the exact number okay so in this case as you know I've talked about in the previous video, we generally do not want to hold this kind of trades all the way to expiration because Tasty Trade has also done a lot of in-depth studies into this and we had a lot of occurrences to show that holding your trades all the way to expiration for this kind of trades, right, 
aren't exactly the best way to optimize your profits right so basically the way you want to get out is roughly around 21 days and the reason is because of gamma right gamma is a threat to premium strategies right short premium strategies because when gamma picks up it will threaten the profits and the profits which you any profits that you have will be uh, can be quickly lost or accelerated to the downside if the market just makes an adverse moves out of this range so that is why we want to always get out at around 21 days for this kind of strategy but again there are many different management style go ahead and watch that video i've talked more about it all right guys so this is for market neutral trading strategy number one now number two is the jade lizard so the jade lizard it is also a video that I've created on. Again, go ahead and watch that video if you want an in-depth tutorial on that. I'll put the link at the top right-hand corner of this video. But basically, the Jade Lizard is where you have a transition from a fully defined risk. So we call this defined risk strategy because you can see on both sides, there is this long options, right? So these two long options, basically, it caps your risk. But when you go to the Jade Lizard, what you will notice is that one side of the long leg has been removed right we still keep the long call on the upside but then you remove this side and the reason you remove this side is because you want to have greater uh, profitability in terms of probability of profit right as you can see this have greatly increased your probability of profit because you no longer have the long leg to kind of have a little bit of a friction with your short leg right whenever you have a long leg which is like for example this long call with your short call it kind of have a friction right because the short call is always making money in terms of theta right you're always collecting a time decay premium but on the long call side you're losing time decay right as uh, time goes on so this too has sort of a friction where it's rubbing against each other so when do you put on this jade lizard so you put on this jade lizard firstly Generally, I like to put a Jade Lizard only on index ETFs because you will find that the legs which you need to kind of move it around to suit the premium which you receive for this uh, whole spread down here, you find it more simple for Jade, uh, for the index ETFs because with individual stocks, sometimes they have only strikes of $5 apart or $10 apart in which you find it very hard to construct a Jade Lizard where there's no risk to the upside. So in this case, what you have done is for the Jade Lizard, you are more of a market neutral to bullish. That means that you don't care if the market rallies to the moon, right? It can go all the way to the sky for all you care. You don't make much or any at all, but as long as you do not lose money, you're good. So that is why it has a much bigger win rate because of this uh, no loss to the upside, right? So this is the Jade Lizard. So how do you construct a Jade Lizard? Same thing as well. You want to take a look at the expected move and again, your short strikes, right? Short strikes are the one where you sell, right? So the short strikes are basically where this expected move uh, is at. So you take 192, you minus off, you know, round it off to 13 points. You get 179 on the upside is this. So for Jade Lizard is a little bit uh, more interesting because this call site where you want to buy this long leg depends on the total credit which you receive for this spread so let's say if you receive two dollars only two dollars for this uh, whole spread that means your this long leg has to be only two dollars wide right so if you go three dollars wide it no longer becomes no risk to the upside you will have some small risk but if you want no risk you got to ensure that this uh, width is lesser than the credit you receive overall for this J lizard. All right, so let's take a look at the chart if you were to just show it on the chart. So you can see that for this, you have a pretty wide profit zone as well. In fact, this is much bigger because the market can go all the way up and you're still in the profit, right? Although it's a very little profit, right? But the most profit you will make, it will be in this profit zone. Now, of course, again, there is uh, loss huge loss or rather unlimited loss at least down to zero if the market continues to crash right so that is why again you want to ensure that at 21 days this is where you want to exit so your losses also get limited now if you're worried about the market crashing and then making you lose all that money well first of all if you're doing this on an index ETF the chances is very unlikely right if the index ETF like for example the broad base like the spiders the diamonds the IWA if it goes to zero we have a much bigger problem than 
you know, <laughs> your your money losing for this trade because the economy, or the rather the U.S. economy, is going all the way down, right? So, based on statistics, you will see that most of the time, the most you can lose is roughly about two standard deviation of this, right? So, if you were to take a look at the option trade uh, ticket, you would see that there is actually a buying power requirement for you to put up for this trade. So that is the capital you need to put up, or rather the margin you need to put up uh, to put on for this trade. And you notice that this amount is actually two standard deviations. So based on calculations, uh, it will very, very rarely pass the two standard deviation uh, of on the trade anytime you put on. So let's say, for example, if you put it on the IWM at this point of time, it is roughly $2,600 for you to put up this trade, which means to say that is most likely the maximum if you do hit it at all, okay? But most of the time, you're not going to do that because there is a very low probability as you can see. So that is the beauty of options. You know the probability uh, well beforehand when you place the trade. All right, guys, so now let's get into the third and final one, and that is the strangle. So we have trans transitioned from a fully defined uh, trade fully defined spread like the iron condor to a semi-defined risk trade which is the jade lizard and now this is a fully undefined trading strategy option trading strategy called the strangle where there is only the short put and the short call so before you get really scared about this trade uh, the thing about this is that it actually can be the most profitable one out of the three because of the pure theta decay that you're going to collect and if you manage this well, you can actually be very consistent in your trades. Now, of course, once in a while, you could have the outlier move, right? The black swan kind of things where you're going to lose much more than what you're going to make. And that is where position sizing comes in. It's very important to put very small trades on each time so that in the event some big move comes, like the COVID crash, any black swan happenings, or the market just keeps on rallying all the way to the sky, your loss is kind of small relative to the size of your account all right so for the sh strangle basically it's just two options there is just two short options you have the short put and the short call and although this is 65.63 uh, percent again it is much higher as we have seen from the previous slides on the historical statistics so for the strangle again it's the easiest to put on because all you have to do is just put on the uh, short strikes and where the expected move is so if you were to take a look at the uh, chart all you can see that this is the profit zone again you can see the profit zone is pretty wide so for the strangle the key to profitability down here is your management right putting it on is pretty simple all you have to do is just see where the expected move is put on the short strikes but where you want to take off profits is roughly at 50 percent of the maximum credit you receive or at 21 days right you really have to manage this well so tasty trade have actually done a lot of studies and trades on this and that they shown that over the period of like 10 to 15 years that as long as you manage your trade well you're going to be profitable in the long term despite all the different crashes that has happened like the 2008 financial crisis and also the trade war and also the recent COVID crash all right so most important is that you manage your risk well. All right, guys, so these are the three market neutral trading strategies. If you're really new to these strategies, I would suggest that you try the iron condor first. Start off with that, right? Start off with this kind of a strategy. Use the expected move and then use roughly about a five point wide width. So this way that your loss is only uh, maximum cap to 500 less the credit which you receive so this will give you a very good way uh, to, to you know test out how market neutral trading strategies work all right guys so that's it for this video i hope you find this video helpful to you and if it has i'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel as well and as always thank you for watching i appreciate your time and may the options favor you